Good morning, brothers and sisters. Church, hello. I'm going to be looking at a portion of a video here that's on the channel here, but I, I, I want to address this. Uh, want to address this. I've been seeing a whole lot recently, especially from Fox News, <laughs> Fox Nazi News. You know, the emotionalists um, talking about. Trump's return. Trump is coming back in 2024 and all this nonsense. Um, I want to address that. I want to address that um, because I'm, I'm going to share with you um, a theory of mine about that. And this video is actually pertaining onto my countrymen, uh, the American people. And those of you of my nation, those of you have, who have ears to hear, I hope you hear. Okay, because you got to remember something, brethren, people. The Jesuit order rules and runs America, and they are allowed. They are allowed to do so by our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. They are allowed to do so for judgment upon a wicked nation such as America. Okay, our president, President Kamala Harris, is not the official president yet, but she will soon be, okay? She will soon be. Never mind smoking joke, okay? Whether he's going to step down because of the debacle in what, Afghanistan, whether they're going to find him incompetent, which I don't, I do not believe he is. I believe it's an act. Whether or not he's going to finish the full four years, Kamala Harris is going to be the official president of the United States at some point. She already is the president of the United States. But there is coming a time soon that she is going to be openly the president of the United States. Okay? But there's a lot of talk, like I've said, you look on Fox News, they're talking about Trump this and Trump that and uh, stoking the fires and keeping the people um, keeping the people's hopes and dreams alive that the great anointed Trump is going to come and rule the day and save America again. I've seen and, um, oh, wow. 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 You know, talk about idolatry, okay? Talk about people worshiping a man. And of all people, 33rd degree Freemason, a Jesuit trained devil like Donald J. Trump. And of course, the charismatics are still pumping it up and it's just very disturbing. <laughs> uh, it is just very disturbing, but a, a little bit on that, okay? Get your authorized version of the scriptures. We're going to read, of course, we're going to read a few scriptures today. Then we're going to play a little portion of this video, and then I'm going to let you. I'm going to let you in on what um, I believe that they are going to use Trump for, because uh, I could be very wrong. Um, if we make it to 2024, okay, when uh, the Jesuits will select a new president for uh, for America, okay, and remember, yes. Our, our political rulers are, are ordained of God. Yes, they are. But for judgment, for judgment upon a wicked nation, a Jesuit Catholic nation such as America. Okay? And Kamala Harris is the judgment of America. Okay? She is. And remember about Miss Kamala Harris, our president. <laughs> yeah. 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 But anyway, I do believe that the Jesuits have a specific purpose for Trump. Trump is, I believe, wholeheartedly, that Trump is going to make a comeback in uh, 2024 and, uh, and whatnot. Is he going to be elected or selected president? No, I don't think so. Uh, remember, the Jesuits have very big plans for Kamala Harris, okay? Remember they uh, that there's a video I got on the channel with Kamala Harris with a nimbus uh, around her head, a nimbus uh, signifying deity, and there's a picture of Smoking Joe out there with a nimbus on his head too, but it's a smaller one, 
And of course, Kamala Harris's uh, nimbus is quite bigger. Hers is bigger than his. <clears throat> yeah, people. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway. Jeremiah chapter 5. Jeremiah chapter 5. Run ye to and fro through the streets of Jerusalem. And see now, and know, and seek in the broad places thereof. If ye can find a man, if there be any that executeth judgment, that seeketh the truth, and I will pardon it. Remember in the book of Genesis, where Abraham was acting as intercessor on the behalf of his nephew Lot for the city of Sodom. And he dwindled, he got the Lord down to ten. If you and he said, the Lord said, and you can look this up in the book of Genesis yourself. Uh, the Lord said, if I find ten righteous people in Sodom, I will for their sake not destroy it. Now, there are those of the church of the living God, those who are truly saved, born again, converted in this nation of America. And remember, he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. The church of the living God, those who are truly saved, born again, converted. Uh, since because we're here, God's wrath is not going to be poured out. Once we get taken up, then God's wrath, the time of Jacob's trouble, will be upon all of you that get left behind. Now, that does not mean that God will not allow destruction, devastation, and um, the destruction of our nation here of, in, uh, of America come to pass while we are still here. It doesn't mean that. But remember, we here, the Church of the Living God, we are that are still in America. Um, we need to be a little bit more vocal and continually pray unto the Lord for mercy, because who knows whom the Lord will save today in our nation? Who knows whom the Lord is going to save today? Okay, let's continue. But th there again, verse one again here that we're looking at. There are a lot of people that seek truth. But are they seeking the real truth? Jesus Christ, he is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by him. See, a lot of the truthers and a lot of people who are seeking truth, they will give truth, but they will not give the source of all truth. Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, through the word, the authorized version of the scriptures. They fall short on that. Because remember, the lie of Satan, ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Who is truly seeking truth today? Very few. Let's continue. And though they say, the Lord liveth, surely they swear falsely. Oh, about all the fake the fakes out there, those who are Christians and not of the church of the living God. Yeah. O Lord, are not thine eyes upon the truth? Thou hast stricken them, but they have not grieved. Thou hast consumed them, but they have not, but they have refused to receive correction. They have made their faces harder than a rock. They have refused to return. Now, the people uh, of our nation and the poor people in Australia with that Nazi tyrannical government over there in Australia. Oh, keep our brothers and sisters of the Church of the Living God in Australia in your prayers every day, people, please. But, um, you know, people are mourning, yes, because they can't go back to normal. But in their mourning and in their affliction, like it says, thou hast consumed them, but they have refused to receive correction. Do they turn on to the Lord? No, they're turning on to the CDC. They're putting their trust in the government. A government that is established of the Lord, allowed of the Lord, by the Jesuit order, to bring devastation and destruction, judgment upon this nation. That's who y'all who are lost, you Christians. That's who y'all are putting your stock in. The Jesuit order. God help you. Let's continue. Therefore I said, surely these are poor, these are foolish, 
Poor doesn't mean always lacking money. Poor in spirit. And foolish, fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Therefore I said, surely these are poor. They are foolish. For they know not the way of the Lord, nor the judgment of their God. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Look at our people today here. You, my countrymen in America, and it doesn't matter what nation you are under heaven. Okay? They don't want to know the truth. They want a God who doesn't judge them, that makes them comfortable in their sins, that doesn't have any requirements. They don't want the God of the scriptures. They don't want our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. That doesn't mean that we quit. No, no. The day we quit, brethren, is the day when you and I are redeemed, resurrected, caught up. You know, that's when we quit. He tells us to. Verse 5. I will get me on to the great men. <laughs> and will speak unto them. For they have known the way of the Lord and the judgment of their God. But these altogether... But these have altogether broken the yoke and burst the bonds. Hmm. The great men. You know, the longer you walk with the Lord, the more humble you are supposed to be. In theory, look at Paul. Why is it where it seems with people, the longer the walk, they walk, the more proud and arrogant they seem to become, the more lackluster, the more um, flippant, the more complacent they seem to become? Isn't that interesting? That, now, of course, that doesn't hold for all, but a majority. And wouldn't you know, a lot of those who are like that in that state are Christians, not of the Church of the Living God. Isn't that fascinating? Let's continue. Wherefore, a lion out of the forest shall slay them, and a wolf of the evening shall spoil them. A leopard shall watch over their cities. Everyone that goeth out thence shall be torn in pieces. Because their transgressions are many, and their backslidings are increased. Again, the government, especially here in America, Australia, the people are wicked. And the governments that are being established right now are there set for judgment. Judgment. These are ungodly nations set up with ungodly rulers to punish those of that nation because their transgressions are many and their backslidings are increased. Verse 7. How shall I pardon thee for this? Thy children have forsaken me and sworn by them that are no gods. When I had fed them to the full, they then committed adultery and, uh, and assembled themselves by troops in the harlots' houses. Oh, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Mystery Babylon the Great, you know, Roman Catholicism and her army, the Jesuit order. Look at that verse. Look at verse 7 there. Look at that. Okay. <laughs> Look at that verse. Beg your pardon. How shall I pardon thee for this? Thy children have forsaken me and sworn by them that are no gods. It, it dumbfounds me. With all the, the truth is out there. You can still find it. That how quick and ready people are to bow their knees unto the Jesuits. Unto the CDC. To our Democami government, government. It doesn't matter if it were a Republican government. It's all Jesuit. America is a Jesuit nation. Hmm. Yes, and look at that verse again. When I had fed them to the full, then they committed adultery and assembled themselves by troops in the harlots' houses. In the harlots' houses. Mm. They were as fed horses in the morning. Everyone nayeth after his neighbor's wife. Yeah, fed. 
being fed a constant stream of lies, propaganda. Yeah. Shall I not visit for visit for these things, saith the Lord? And shall not my soul be avenged on such a nation as this? Look at America. Look at the America, America with the open sodomy, with the murders of abortion every single day, okay? And with the um, time-lapsed murder of the steel of the Jesuit Punyard. And look at what they're doing right now. Apparently, uh, what, what, what's, uh, the, the, it's the 20th today, right? Apparently, slowly but surely, they are making it so that no one will be able to have a job anymore in America unless they receive the steel of the Jesuit Punyard. Apparently, last night, they made it that all health care workers are now got to get that steel of the Jesuit Punyard. Yeah, yeah, conditioning, training you for when we, the Church of the Living God, are taken out of here, training you to receive that mark of the beast, boy. Yeah. Look at verse 9 again. Shall not I visit for these things, saith the Lord? And shall not my soul, oh, God has a soul. Oh, gee, you don't say. <laughs> Yeah, spirit, soul, and body, <laughs> one God, uh -huh. our Lord Jesus Christ, who is our Father. Uh -huh. yeah. The Holy Ghost, you remember him? Yeah, yeah, the Lord is that spirit, one God, spirit, soul, and body. Okay, let's continue. Go ye up upon her walls and destroy, but make not at full end. Take away her battlements, for they are not the Lord's, for they are not the Lord's. We here in America, do we think we're going to get away with this? Huh? You think this nation is just going to uh, scoot by? America's done. Sooner or later. They're done. It's only by God's mercies and his grace that America, that we still have this time before they unleash the famine. But there again, remember, they do these in increments, okay? Slowly, in grocery stores, you're not going to be able to get this and that. Slowly, they're implementing forced steel of the Jesuit punier. Slowly. Because if they do it right at once, that, no, no. Even the Jesuits, with the control that they have, if they were to do it rapidly, just like that, like all at once, overnight, no. That would cause a revolt, and that's what they ultimately want here in America. They want revolt. They do. Okay? They do. Because unfortunately, fortunately, but yet unfortunately, um, we Americans are quite heavily armed. Not as heavily armed as our military that all have taken the steel of the Jesuit Ponyard that have a four-year lifespan now at the most, or five-year lifespan now at the, at the most, okay? Yeah, but see, we here, we're quite heavily armed. Take away their food. Starve them with a heavily armed nation and inflict upon them Nazi rules and Nazi regulations and our people being very armed. It's a recipe for disaster. People, you need to get saved. Let's continue. For the house of Israel and the house of Judah have dealt very treacherously against me, saith the Lord. They have belied the Lord and said, It is not he, neither shall evil come upon us, <laughs> saying peace and safety. <laughs> neither shall we see sword nor famine. Hello, my American countrymen. Look at that verse. And they belied the Lord and said, it is not he. Neither shall evil come upon us. Neither shall we see sword and fam nor famine. Hello? McFly, is anyone home? People? 
we're going to be seeing sword and famine. And the prophets shall become wind. And the word is not in them. Thus shall it be done unto them. Just believe. Just believe. No brokenness, no contrition, no calling on the name of the Lord. No, just believe. God loves you. God's not mad at you. God's not going to judge you. God wants what's best for you. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Your breakthrough is on the way or whatever nonsense they still to this day preach. Oh, and how you lost people and you professing. No, and you Christians. Wherefore, thus saith the Lord God of hosts, because he speak this word, behold, I will make my words in thy mouth fire, and this people would, and it shall devour them. Lo, I will bring a nation upon you from far, O house of Israel, saith the Lord. It is a mighty nation, it is an ancient nation, a nation whose language thou knowest not, neither understandest what they say. Their quiver is as an open sepulcher. They are all mighty men. And they shall eat up thine harvest and thy bread, which thy sons and thy daughters should eat. They shall eat up thy flocks and thine herds. They shall eat up thy vines and thy fig trees. They shall impervish thy fenced cities, wherein thou trustest with the sword. Nevertheless, in those days, saith the Lord, I will not make a full end with you. And it shall come to pass, when ye shall say, Wherefore doeth the Lord our God all these things unto us? Why, why is a loving God doing this all unto us? Then shalt thou answer them, Like as ye have forsaken me and served strange gods in your land, so shall ye serve strangers in a land that is not yours. What strangers are you serving? The Jesuit order. In the land that is not yours? Uh, we're, we're us white folk, you know, us of Shem, uh, not of Shem, excuse me, uh, us of Japheth. We're, are we the indigenous ones to this continent here of America? No. How about those of Ham? Are you the indigenous ones here to America? Oh, no, but you like to blame Shem for what uh, for you being brought over here, right? Um, no, you like to, uh, excuse me, not Shem, but uh, you like to blame Japheth for bringing those of you of Ham over here, right? No, uh, you, you, you blame the Jesuits. Hmm. You blame them. You blame Catholicism. Don't blame kindreds. Blame the ones that ought to be blamed. Satan and his church, Roman Catholicism, and his army, the Jesuit order. Don't blame Ham. Don't blame Japheth. Don't blame Shem. Blame Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. The church, Mystery Babylon, you know, Roman Catholicism, her army, the Jesuits. Satan, he's your enemy, not we. Declare this in the house of Jacob and publish it in Judah, saying, Hear now this, O foolish people, the fool has said in his heart there is no God. And without understanding, being separate, you know, understanding, to depart from evil is understanding. The people here in America, they're rushing to evil. They can't wait. Hear now this, O foolish people, and without understanding, which have eyes and see not, which have ears and hear not. Hear ye not me? 
There is no fear of God before their eyes. But our Lord is saying, <laughs> you're going to fear me, boy. You lost people, you wicked devils, you coadjutors. You're going to fear the Lord. You're going to fear the Lord. Fear ye not me, saith the Lord. Will ye not tremble at my presence, which have placed the sand for the bound of the sea by a perpetual decree that it cannot pass it? Who do you think you're dealing with? See, you, you lost people and you devils, you, you have a God of your own making. One that is just like you. One who has no requirements. One who doesn't judge. One who's okay with your sin. And though the waves thereof toss themselves, yet can they not prevail. Waves, again, waters being likened unto people. Waves toss themselves, people. Though they roar, yet can they not pass over it? When the Lord says something, what is man going to do to prevent it? Whether it be yea or whether it be nay. But this people hath a revolting and a rebellious heart. They are revolted and gone. Gone past that point of no return. Many of you. You've made your choice. Like these satanic, wicked, devil, coadjutor, easy believism, heretic devils. Say that ten times fast. Here on YouTube. Hi. You're gone. You're revolted and gone. You're past that point of no return. A lot of you, I believe. Well, my only prayer is that there are some of you that get out, that come to our Lord broken and contrite, and in fear, call upon the name of the Lord, and that he save you. The majority of them are gone, brethren. That doesn't mean we give up. That means that doesn't mean we quit. But we have to remember. A lot of these people have made their choice. Neither say they in their heart, Let us now fear the Lord our God, that giveth rain, both the former and the latter, in his season. He reserveth unto us the appointed weeks, the appointed weeks of the harvest. You're loving, you're loving God. Why is your loving God doing all this? Your iniquities have turned away these things, and your sins have withholden good things from you. For among my people are found wicked men. They lay wait as he that setteth snares. They set a trap. They catch men. All these infiltrators, all these devil coadjutor heretic devils who say they believe in the authorized version of the scriptures and they don't. They can't teach. They can't preach. All they can do is sow confusion. All they can do is spark fires out of the lies and venom that comes out of their mouth. That's all they can do. But yet, remember, they're Christians. <laughs> As a cage is full of birds, so are their houses full of deceit. Therefore they are become great and waxen rich. Kind of like Trump. That guy who's got probably one of the biggest egos around. <laughs> You don't think that guy is loving all the attention he's getting? But what's strange about him is that he's on a suicide mission. That's what I believe. Well, I'll talk, I'll go over that with uh, over you. I'll go over that with you in a moment here. But verse twenty-eight: They are waxen fat; they shine. Yea, they overpass the deeds of the wicked. You know, like our government leaders, the uh, the people that are in control of big pharma. Okay, with all the money being made, with the psychological operation, the poison crown that's going on right now, all these people in the higher up positions are just getting kickbacks and bathing in filthy lucre. They persecute the poor. And what does this say? They are waxen fat. They shine, yea, they overpass the deeds of the wicked. They judge not the cause. The cause of the fatherless. Yet they prosper. And the right of the needy they judge they, and the right of the needy do they not judge. How many of the people here in America and in your nation are so needy? And you go to the socialistic, uh, communistic 
government. And it's like, oh, our hands are tied. Shall I not visit for these things, saith the Lord? Shall not my soul be avenged on such a nation as this? A wonderful and horrible thing is committed in the land. And how true is this for today? The prophets prophesy falsely. People having itching ears, wanting to hear what they say. Speak unto us smooth things. Prophesy deceits. And the priests, Jesuit priests, bear rule by their means. And my people love to have it so. What will ye do in the end thereof? Oh, you people, you would sell your own soul so you can go back to normal, so you can drink your lattes and have your toxic fast food and go out and mingle in public, in bars, flaunting the flesh. Yeah. History is repeating itself. You know, one of the books that I often recommend to people that they read beside the scriptures is this book right here, The Secret History of the Jesuits. Okay, this is a this is a very informative, educational book for you to read. Um, you learn about how the Jesuit order does things, how they manipulate nations. Okay, like I said, I do highly recommend to all of you of the Church of the Living God, and even you lost people. You can get this book still. I mean, you can get it off of eBay or you can go to Chick Publications. Uh, but uh, you can still get this book. Uh, this is a very um, helpful book for you to look at. This is how they, you know, in this book, this is how the Jesuit order does things. Okay. One of the books that you can get. Very helpful. Very helpful. Let's see. You people. You're willing to do anything that the Jesuit order tells you to do in order to get back to normal. And all the while, you're laying your life on the uh, on the altar of the Jesuit. Sacrifice your life just so you can have your donuts. Just so you can get that filthy lucre. Then you have these Christians coming at you with the Sermon on the Mount, which is for the kingdom of heaven, doesn't even apply doctrinally for today. Jesus would have you do these things. It's your Christian view. You, you Christians who are not of the church of the living God, you're going to pay dearly for what you have done. Will. Jeremiah chapter 6 now. Verses 9 on to verse 17. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, they shall thoroughly glean the remnant of Israel as a vine. Turn back thine hand as a gray gatherer into the baskets. To whom shall I speak and give warning that they may hear? Behold, their ear is uncircumcised, and they cannot hearken. Behold, the word of the Lord is on to them a reproach. They have no delight in it. Oh, brethren, church of living God. Oh, tell me, tell me, huh? Uh, you know, a uh, uh, dearly, dearly beloved sister of ours, you know, has sent me, uh, you know, an email about, you, you, you're, you're right, sister. These people are crazy stupid. You're right. In comments here, oh, come on, brethren, you've seen it. Outside your door, you've seen it. <laughs> you've seen it. Prophecy is being fulfilled daily before our eyes. Okay? Look at that verse. To whom shall I speak and give warning that they may hear? Behold, their ear is uncircumcised, and they cannot hearken. Behold, the word of the Lord is unto them a reproach. They have no delight in it. They stop their ears. You start speaking the truth of Scripture unto someone, they get violent. Foaming at the mouth as if they're a rabbit dog. Remember, though, this is not an excuse for us to quit. We are to be serving the Lord in whatever capacity he has called you in. 
until that time he says, come up hither, or he say, that's enough. Still have a, a window, a, a door of opportunity. And he who has ears to hear, let them hear. If they won't, go to the next one. Don't use this as a reason to quit. If you do, the Lord rebuke you. Let's continue. Therefore, I am full of the fury of the Lord. I am weary with holding in. I will pour it out upon the children abroad and upon the assembly of the young men together. For even the husband with the wife shall be taken, the aged with him that is full of days. Take that verse in, okay? Now, we are not appointed to God's wrath. The church of the living God, we are not appointed to wrath. God's wrath is the time of Jacob's trouble. We, the church of the living God, get resurrected, redeemed, caught up before that happens, okay? But that does not mean that we are not going to see things like this happening today. And note the totality in verse 11 there. Okay? I will pour it upon the children abroad. Okay? I heard about in Australia that they're taking the children into like an auditorium so they can all receive the steel of the Jesuit poniard. Okay? The children. Okay? And upon the assembly of young men together, the teenagers. Okay? Same thing. Even the husband with the wife shall be taken, uh, husband, you know, self-explanatory, and the age with him that is full of days, sparing nothing, sparing nothing. You need to get saved before it is too late. And their houses shall be turned on to others. Oh, like China. Oh, like Bill Gates. You know, people, the debt that America has, you know, this growing debt. Um, who is that? Who do we owe that to? China. And there are Chinese troops up in Canada. You know, Air John Phillips always said that he believed that a uh, foreign nation would invade America someday. <laughs> and I used to think he was kind of nutty over that. I did. Uh, it could probably happen that way, couldn't it? <laughs> Wait here, let me... I, I broke train of thought. Verse 12 again. And their houses shall be turned on to others with their fields and wives together. For I will stretch out my hand upon the inhabitants of the land, said the Lord. This isn't even his wrath. This isn't even his anger yet. For from the least of them, even unto the greatest of them, everyone is given to covetousness. And from the prophet, even unto the priest, everyone dealeth falsely. Covetousness, which is idolatry. Covetousness, what you want, meaning you are your own idol. From the least to the greatest. They have healed also the hurt of the daughter of my people slightly, saying, Peace, peace, when there is no peace. Good place here. We have to touch on it. First Thessalonians. Verses one, uh, verse First Thessalonians chapter five, verses one on verse three. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you, for yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say, "Peace and safety," then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. Verse 14 again. They have healed also the hurt of the daughter of my people slightly, saying, Peace, peace, when there is no peace. Were they ashamed? America, Australia, Canada, 
China, even China, Japan. I find it interesting that even China, a communist country, has openly made remarks about the Nazism that's going on in Australia. That, that, that's pretty, wow. <laughs> Were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? Nay, they were not at all ashamed, neither could they blush. Therefore they shall fall among them that fall. At the time that I visit, at the time that I visit them, they shall be cast down, saith the Lord. They flaunt it, flaunting their sin, just like what the easy believism devil heretic coadjutor Jesuits do. They flaunt it. Because you say, remember, because you just believe because of what you do? Yeah. So they make you comfortable in your sin. Nonsense. At the time that I visit them, they shall be cast down, saith the Lord. Let's read verse 15 again. Were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? Nay, they were not at all ashamed, neither could they blush. Therefore they shall fall among them that fall. At the time that I visit them, they shall be cast down, saith the Lord. Now I terrify every single one of you in my country and the nations abroad. But see, people are starting to rise up. People are starting to talk about the truth. But they're not talking about the way, the truth, and the life, Christ Jesus. And the Jesus, when they do that they're talking about, they're talking about this fictitious uh, Jesus, who just loves everybody and has no requirements and is not a God of judgment. They're talking about that man of sin, the son of perdition. That's right. Not the Jesus Christ, God our Father of the Scriptures. Thus said the Lord, Stand ye in the ways, church of the living God, stand ye in the ways, and see and ask for the old paths. Where is the good way? And walk therein. And ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk therein. <laughs> the old ways. The ways of the scriptures. The old ways. But no. No. Welcome to the new normal. Also I set watchmen over you, saying, hearken to the sound of the trumpet. But they said, we will not hearken. Ezekiel, Ezekiel, chapter 13, verses 1 on to verse 16. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, prophesy against the prophets of Israel that prophesy and say on and say thou unto them that prophesy out of their own hearts hear ye the word of the Lord yeah remember because yeah, God knows your heart right yeah 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 and you say that to justify your actions even though you behave like a devil in your loss yeah but God knows your heart yeah <laughs> yeah yeah thus saith the Lord God woe unto the foolish prophets that follow their own spirit and have seen nothing. O Israel, thy prophets are like the foxes in the deserts. Ye have not gone up into the gaps. Every single one of you devils here on YouTube. Neither made up the hedge for the house of Israel to stand in the day, to stand in the battle in the day of the Lord. You're weakening people. By preaching your satanic, grotesque, disgusting, Jesuit, ecumenical, filthy, easy believism. You're not standing in gaps. All you can do is attack. You can't teach. You are incapable. You can't do it. It behooves you to open the scriptures. Why? Because you are not saved. You are a devil. You can't do it. I've heard some of you try to read from the scriptures. Oh, wow. You're inept. You can't do it. You can't do it. All you can do is cast 
Uh, stones. That's all you can do. You're nothing. You're nobody. You're scum. They have seen vanity and lying divination, saying, The Lord saith, and the Lord hath not sent them. <laughs> and they have made others to hope that they would confirm the word. See, they all gather together, these Jesuit devil coadjutors. This is how they do it. They're all working together. They're all working from the same script, from their master Satan and his church Catholicism and her army, the Jesuits. Okay? But they're looking for others to confirm the word. Yeah. It's not a surprise or a coincidence when you see these devils working in tandem, doing the same thing. Have you not seen a vain vision? <laughs> and have you not spoken a lying divination, whereas ye say the Lord saith it, albeit I have not spoken? Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, because ye have spoken vanity and seen lies, therefore, behold, I am against you, saith the Lord God. Oh, oh, all you enemies of mine and of the church of the living God. Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, is against you. Yeah, keep running your big mouths. Yeah, yeah. You're going to pay. You're going to burn. And see, you can't reason with these people. You just got to deal with them. You just got to, you know, let them talk. Because that's all they can do. They have no power. They have nothing. They are nothing. Verse 9. And mine hand shall be upon the prophets that see vanity. And that divine lies. They shall not be in the assembly of my people. Yeah, because they're not of us. Neither shall they be written in the writing of the house of Israel. Neither shall they enter into the land of Israel. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. Now, also put this into context with the politicians. Yeah. Yeah. From uh, verse 1 so far on to verse 9. Okay. Okay. Put that in context with the politicians that you see. Okay? Yeah. Jesuits. Because, even because they have seduced my people, saying peace, and there was no peace. One built up a wall, and lo, other daubed it with untempered mortar. Now, remember what we were just, what I was just talking with you about? These false prophets here on YouTube and out there in the church buildings, put that into context with the politicians. Jesuit Mason Trump set up the wall. Kamala Harris with her front man smoking Joe. They're putting up the, uh, they're uh, daubing it with untempered mortar. They're all working together because they all work for the Jesuits. Say unto them which daub it with untempered mortar that it shall fall. There shall be an overflowing shower, and ye, O great hailstones, shall fall, and a stormy wind shall rend it, tear it. Lo, when the wall is fallen, shall it not be said unto you, Where is the daubing wherewith ye have daubed it? Yeah, where, where are all your politicians and all your Catholic disease creator people that you put your faith in? Huh? Where are the gods that you are looking to? Where are they in your time of trouble? Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, I will even rend it with a stormy wind in my fury. And there shall be an overflowing shower in mine anger and great hailstones in my fury to consume it. So will I break down the wall that ye have daubed with untempered mortar. And bring it down to the ground, so that the foundation thereof shall be discovered, and it shall fall, and ye shall be consumed in the midst thereof, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. Look at that verse. Future prophecy. The Lord at his second, second coming, coming back with us to church of the living God, is going to destroy 
Satan's petty little kingdom. Okay? And the foundation is going to be exposed, meaning that the walls that are being built up right now, sooner or later, there's going to come a point when all you lost people are going to know that it has been Satan that has been duping you. See, when the Lord breaks down the wall and exposes the foundation, uh, you will quickly discover that the foundation that these people are building off of is not Jesus Christ. They're building off the foundation of Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth and her army. And Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother, you know, Roman Catholicism, is run by who? Satan. By the time the walls are broken down for you lost people and you realize that it's Satan who has been beguiling you all this time, it's going to be too late for you. You'll probably be already in the time of Jacob's trouble, which is by faith and works. You take that mark, you go straight to hell. Not straight to hell, but you take that mark, you're going to hell. And you're, you'll take the mark. That doesn't mean that you're going to go like disappear quickly and go to hell. No, you're, you've sealed your fate. You're going to hell. You take the mark of the beast. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. You're going to hell. Your ticket is punched, so to speak. And see what today, with the seal of the Jesuit Bunyard, you've only got a little time left. With the, in the time of Jacob's trouble, you take that mark. You're done. There's no going back. Verse 15, thus will I accomplish my wrath upon the wall and upon them that have daubed it with untempered mortar and will say unto you, the wall is no more, neither they that daubed it. To wit, the prophets of Israel which prophesy concerning Jerusalem and which see visions of peace for her and there is no peace. Peace. Ezekiel chapter 34. Then we're going to get to this video. Ezekiel chapter 34. Verses 1 under verse 10. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God unto the shepherds. Woe be to the shepherds of Israel that do feed themselves. Should not the shepherds feed the flocks? You people who look to Trump as your white knight in shining armor, as your savior, your idiots. Is he going to feed you? Huh? Is he going to provide for you? Huh? No, he's feeding himself. These people who are in control right now here in America and, and whatever nation, they're feeding themselves. They don't care about you. They want to kill you to depopulate the earth. Ye eat the fat, and ye clothe you with the wool. Ye kill them that are fed, but ye feed not the flock. Every one of these politicians, they ain't in it for us. They're in it for themselves, for filthy lucre. The diseased have ye not strengthened. <laughs> yeah, with the poison crown and the steel of the Jesuit poniard, yeah. Neither have ye healed that which was sick. <laughs> Neither have ye bound up that which was broken. Neither have ye brought again that which was driven away. Neither have ye sought that which was lost. But with force and with cruelty have ye ruled them. Catholics, Jesuits, the politicians, easy believism, devils, a lot of you. And they were scattered because there is no shepherd. And they became meat to all the beasts of the field when they were scattered. Feeding themselves off of you like a cat just sucked up a big bowl of cream. Licking their paws.
My sheep wandered through all the mountains and upon every high hill. Yea, my flock was scattered upon all the face of the earth, and none did search or seek after them. Therefore, ye shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. As I live, saith the Lord God, surely because my flock became a prey, and my flock became meat to every beast of the field, because there was no shepherd, neither did my shepherds search for, the, for my flock. You're at the church of the living God. This is the time when you need to be doing something in the capacity the Lord has called you on to. Excuses are for lost people. But the shepherds feed themselves. And feed not my flock. Just like Trump is going to do. You idiots. Make uh, save America again. You're idiots. An idiot is someone void of logic and reason. Therefore, O ye shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against the shepherds. And I, and I will require my flock at their hand, and cause them to cease from feeding the flock. Neither shall the shepherds feed themselves any more, for I will deliver my flock from their mouth, that they may not be meat for them. And we, the church of the living God, for the time of Jacob's trouble, we get caught up. We're not going to see God's wrath. But see, you're, those of you who left behind, you're going to go through the seven years of the time of Jacob's trouble. Your politicians, your rulers are not there to help you. There's only one, there is only one answer for you. Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. He is the only way. He is the only answer. He is the only one that will give you peace. He is the only one who can guarantee you safety when you die. Those of you who have taken the steel of the Jesuit Punyard, you have five years the most, four to five years the most, where they turn up the dial for the 5G. And with what's ever in, whatever batch of that Poison that you've received of the Jesuit Ponyard is going to react with 5G. Whatever. You're a ticking time bomb. Now's the time to get saved. And you disgusting Christians. God would want you to do that. The Lord rebuke every single one of you Christians out there who are saying, go ahead, get the steel of the Jesuit Ponyard. Go ahead. Bow to the government that's evil, set there for judgment, ruled by the Jesuits. The Lord rebuke every single one of you Christians. Because you ain't of the church of the living God. Corrupt the word of God. And don't read all of Romans chapter 13. Now, go to John chapter 10. That's what we are going to finish on. But we're going to play this thing that you've been looking at now. Okay? We, uh, go to John chapter 10, but we're not going to read John chapter 10 yet. Uh, we're going to go through this. Okay? Now, I'm not going to say anything. I'm going to just let this go by itself. And I'm going to let you in on a little theory here of mine. Okay? But this is from the um, documentary about the Jesuit order that's here on the channel. I'll make sure to put the link. In the uh, description box, as you can see, the timestamp on it. It's not timestamp, but check this out. Okay, check this out. Famous hundred days. The monarchs gathered in Vienna came to terms quickly in order to meet this renewed threat. The Jesuits' careful manipulation of the events being played out like a chess game. Again, it must be remembered that the Society of Jesus never wanted to do away with kings. The Jesuits only wanted to punish those who had suppressed the order. In March of 1815, nine days after the Congress of Vienna ended, Napoleon led his patriotic monarchy-hating men to defeat by attacking the wrong spot of the British lines at Waterloo. The Battle of Waterloo was deliberately lost by Napoleon 
as explicated by our great Southern General Thomas Jonathan Stonewall Jackson when he reviewed the battlefield. And you can find this in Dabney's great work, his uh, biography that he wrote on Stonewall Jackson called The Life and Times of Stonewall Jackson. And when Jackson went there, he said, Napoleon attacked from the wrong position. He should have attacked over here. And that's exactly what happened. Napoleon deliberately sacrificed his army at Waterloo so that there would be the least amount of true patriots in France to resist the return of King Louis XVIII into France, who immediately restored the Jesuits and restored the Inquisition. Having no further need of Napoleon, the Jesuits made sure he was sent far away to the island St. Helena in the South Atlantic. While there, he was poisoned and died in 1821. In his memoirs, Napoleon maintained his loyalty to the Catholic Church, but had this to say about the Jesuits. The Jesuits are a military organization, not a religious order. Their chief is a general of an army, not the mere father abbot of a monastery. And the aim of this organization is power, power in its most despotic exercise, absolute power, universal power, power to control the world by the volition of a single man. Who is that single man? Right now it's Sosa, the Black Pope, but ultimately it's going to be that man of sin, the son of perdition. Napoleon! You just saw. You just saw. Napoleon was brought back for a hundred days, and he was brought back to fulfill a purpose, as you just saw, to sacrifice French patriots who would put up quite a resistance to the returning king. Here is my theory. As the Jesuits have done throughout history, remember, I, I recommend you get this book if you can and read it. This is a helpful book. This shows you how the Jesuits do things, okay? And remember, there is nothing new under the sun. History repeats itself, okay? Remember that. This is what I believe they're going to do with Trump. Now, come 2024, the next election, I believe that Trump is going to come back. That he's going to, you know, be a big opposition and whatnot. And all these Americans who are rallying behind Trump, all the Pentecostal charismatic uh, people are rallying behind Trump. And all these people, may save America again. And all these people like the, that idiot, um, Phil Robinson, all, all these Christians going to come under Trump. It's like, yay. But he's being brought back for a purpose, I believe sacrifice on the Jesuit altar. Those who follow him. Those who are patriotic, but yet not looking to the God of the scriptures, our God, our Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ, our Father. They're putting their trust in Trump, that he is going to be the one that's delivering them. I believe personally that as the Jesuit order brought back Napoleon for encore performance, that he may purposely lose, and in losing, sacrifice the patriots, the French patriots, those of our country in America that are patriotic, that are going to rally behind Trump. He's going to lose, and he's going to sacrifice you. for the Does that mean an actual literal sacrifice? I don't know. But as the Jesuits did with Napoleon Bonaparte, I believe that is also what exactly they are going to do with Donald Trump in 2024. Against who? Kamala Harris. See, if the Jesuits allow Biden to stay as the front person uh, for the four-year term, uh, there's no way the, he... what. Uh, Smoking Joe has done already. There's no way that the Jesuits would allow 
or be allowed to be like, okay, show you served your purpose. Go over there and now we'll, we will get to you later. Okay. No, he's the setup man for Kamala Harris. Like I've told you, I've been telling you from the beginning. Okay. She is the actual president. Okay. But bring up Trump to be an adversary. Remember, this is the Hegelian principle. Uh, argument, counter argument to control the outcome of it. Okay. What is it? Thesis, anti thesis, synthesis, or whatever, whatever the words are. But it's the Hegelian principle. Hegel of the Illuminati. The Illuminati created by Weissop. Weissop was what? A Jesuit. Okay. Hello, people. Okay. Trump is going to be brought back to be a strong opposition onto Kamala Harris. And all these idiots, American patriots, oh, Trump, 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 is going to purposely lose. And all those you of you, of you, my countrymen, who are rallying behind this man, you're going to be his fodder. You're going to be sacrificed. The Jesuit order. Jesuit order has a picked Kamala Harris. We're not going to get away from that. That is what I believe the Jesuit order is going to be doing with Donald Trump. Because you're seeing it on Fox News. They're pushing Trump. The, 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 you, you look up Trump online. They have Save America again. Trump 2024. I'll be back. Yeah, he will. But as you just saw, what they did with Napoleon Bonaparte. I believe that is exactly the same thing that the Jesuits are going to do with Donald Trump as they did with Napoleon Bonaparte. So I said, Trump is on a suicide mission. And a brother asked me, uh, our best friend asked me the other, uh, the one time when I've uh, discussed this with him, I was like, what, 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 what about Trump himself? He knows. He has to know. But remember, these people, these coadjutors, Napoleon never gave up on the Catholic Church, even though the Catholic Church killed him. The Jesuits, okay? Trump is a Catholic. Oh, see, you got these charismatic Pentecostal score Catholics telling you that he's a Christian. And yeah, you're right. He is. Catholics are Christians. Okay? Trump will never give up his loyalty to the Roman Catholic Church. Remember, he's also a Freemason. Freemasons are run by the Jesuits, okay? But I believe after Trump serves his purpose, as they did with Napoleon, so will they do with Mr. Trump. So will they do to all of you, my countrymen, who are rallying behind this man. Can I prove that? No. But history repeats itself. There is nothing new under the sun, people. Your only hope is Jesus Christ, God our Father. This, come on, dude, come on. John chapter 10. Verses 1 under verse 18. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. Are you easy believers and devils? That's you. Just believe. That's you. You're a thief and a robber. You're not going through the door. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice. And he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them. And the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him. For they know not the voice of strangers. This parable spake Jesus unto them, but they understood not what things they were which he spake unto them. Then said Jesus unto them again, 
Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by him. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. Now, here's the first one. Here he's referencing the catching away. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief, the coadjutors here on YouTube, preaching another Jesus, a false gospel. Our politicians who are serving mammon and Jesuit order, Roman Catholicism, Satan. Okay? The thief cometh not but for to steal, steal your liberty, and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Um, eternal life is abundant life. I, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But he that is an hireling, the Christians in the church buildings, the politicians, the devils here on YouTube, and whatever platform they're on, okay? But he that is an hireling and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming, and leaveth the sheep, and fleeth, and the wolf catcheth them, and scattereth the sheep. The hireling fleeth because he is an hireling and careth not for the sheep. People. People. These people who preach to you easy believism, just believe, they don't care about you. These people in your government quarantining you, locking you up as a prisoner in your own home, killing you, putting Nazi restrictions upon you. They don't care about you. They don't. They only care about themselves. They are serving their father, the devil, who is Satan. They don't care about you. Isn't it obvious in their conduct? Verse 13 again. The hireling fleeth because he is an hireling and careth not for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and am known of mine. As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, making reference unto the coming dispensation of the Gentiles being grafted into the tree of the Jew. Them also must I bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Therefore doth my Father love me, because I lay down my life, that I might take it again. No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down. And I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my Father. There are going to be a plethora of links in this video. A plethora. Okay. You know, the times we live in, People don't want the truth, but there is out there a few people who actually do. Those are the ones that we are seeking. Y'all think I'm crazy. <laughs> when this stuff starts to happen, people, take heed. Because by the time some of you wake up, it'll be far too late for you. My countrymen, and whatever country you're in under heaven, whatever nation you're in, please take consideration of these things. Be warned.
God help you. And those of you Christians who are not of the church of the living God, you're a Christian, and who promote the devil's work, the Lord rebuke you. And you're going to have to answer to him for what you have done. Don't be a Christian. Get saved and be of the church of the living God. Any questions? <laughs>